Hi, and welcome to lesson 18.2, which is about equations with rational numbers. So how can you solve equations with rational number coefficients and constants? Solving an equation with that involves fractions. To solve an equation with a variable on both sides that involves fractions, start by using the least common multiple, our LCM, to eliminate fractions from the equation. And now to remind you, a little bit about coefficients and constants. The coefficient is always the number in front of the variable. In this case, 7 tenths is the coefficient. And a constant is a number without a variable. 3 halves is a constant. 3 fifths is a, con is a coefficient. And 2 is a constant. OK, so our LCM. As we look at 10, 2, and 5, our least common multiple is 10. And it says here, least common multiple is 10. So I multiply both sides by 10. I'm going to multiply that left side all by 10 and the right side all by 10. So what I, and, and we can cross cancel. 10 divides 10 each one time, and 1 times 7 is 7. Uh, 2 divides 10 5 times. So 10 divided by 2 is uh, 5, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 3 times 5 is 15. Also, uh, 5 divides both of these, so 5 divides 5 one time, and 5 divides 10 two times. 2 times 3 is 6, and 10 times 2 is 20. And the advantage now is we have no fractions, and we can do what we did in 18.1. We use inverse operations to solve the equation. We can uh, move the constants all to the right by using the additive inverse. This is eliminated, and 20 minus 15 is 5. And then we could subtract 6n from both sides using the additive inverse here to eliminate that side. And 6n, 7n minus 6n is 1n, or just n. And the answer is n equals 5. What's the advantage of multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominators in the first step? Well, it simplifies the calculations by eliminating the fractions. So see, what we did is we multiplied everything by the least common multiple all over here, and we have no more fractions. What if, what happens in the first step if you multiply both sides by a common multiple of the denominators and not the least common multiple? Well, you would eliminate all the fat fractions, but the result would be an equation with greater integer coefficients. So, for example, if I have a common multiple, well, 20 is a common multiple of all of these. So if I multiplied 20 by everything, I would end up with all the co coefficients and constants that are larger. It, they would be twice the size. That would be 14n, that would be 30, that would be 12n, and that would be 40. And you'll still get the same answer. You're just dealing with larger numbers. I have number 3 here. And for number three, you should try to get uh, try that out. And uh, I'm going to show you what I did here. So this equation is down below here. I wrote it here. And I multiplied everything by 7. The least common multiple is 7. I tend to just put big parentheses around and just know that I'm going to multiply 7 by that and the six, negative 6 and the 3 sevenths and the 4. So 7 times 1 seventh. What I do is I see that 7 goes into 7 one time, and 1 times 1 is 1, 1k. One 7 times 6, well, that's just 42. So it's minus 42. Make sure you have those signs in front, or those operations in front. 7 goes into 7 one time, and 7 times 3 is 21. Oh, I'm sorry, 7. Uh, seven, 7 goes into 7 one time, and 1 times 3 is 3. Haha, ha, 3k. And 4 times 7 is 28. Now I'm going to get the variable terms on one side, and I have 3 minus 3k minus 1k is 2k, and then I'm going to write down the rest. Negative 42 equals 2k plus 28, and then I'm going to use additive inverses again to move the 28 to the other side, and negative 42 plus negative 48 is negative 70, and that equals 2k. So I have to divide 70 by negative uh, negative 70 divided by 2 to arrive at negative 35 for k. The next question, number four, is that I've written it down here. And I see that I have 6, 2, and 4, and the least common multiple is 12. So 12 multiplied by each item. What I do is, if I have a fraction, the denominator, 6 goes into 12 two times, and 2 times 5 is 10. Why? 
no fraction here, so just 1 times 12 is 12. 2 goes into 12 6 times, and 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Don't forget the y variable. And then 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 3 times 1 is 3. Now I have no fractions. I will move the variable terms to the left using inverse operations. 10 plus 6 is 16y. Copy the 12, copy the 3. Inverse operations again, subtracting 12. 3 minus 12 is negative 9. And now I have this, where 16y equals negative 9. I have to divide both sides by negative 16 to get these to cancel. And I have that, negative 9 over 16, which is my answer right there. Involving or solving an equation that involves decimals. Solving an equation on variables of both sides that involves decimals is similar to solving an equation with fractions. But instead of uh, first multiplying both sides by the LCM, you're going to multiply by a power of 10 to eliminate the decimals. Javier walks from his house to the zoo at a constant rate. After walking 75 hundredths of a mile, he meets his brother Raul and they continue walking at the same constant rate. When they arrive at the zoo, Javier has walked for five tenths of an hour and Raul has walked two tenths of an hour. What is the rate in miles per hour at which the brothers walk to the zoo? Let's write an equation. For the distance the brothers walked uh, from the brothers house to the zoo using the fact that the distance equals rate times time. Distance distance equals rate times time. Distance traveled is the rate times the time that it was traveled. R is the brother's walking rate. So the distance to the zoo is the, well, there it is. Uh, we have at, it walked 7 tenths of a mile, uh, 75 hundredths of a mile, sorry, and uh, they've walked for 0.2 hours uh, at that certain rate. So uh, 2 tenths of an hour uh, plus the uh, distance he's already walked gives you the entire distance to the zoo, uh, which will be is here, Javier's walk for 0.5 hour, 5 tenths of an hour. Okay, so they, so when are they equal at that point? Multiply both sides of the equation by 10 to the second, or 100. I'm going to multiply that, it, yeah, and we have to multiply by 100, because we want to move the decimal, we want to get rid of the decimals. To get rid of the decimal here, you have to multiply this just by 10, and this just by 10, because when you multiply by 10, it moves the decimal to the right. But this one has to be moved twice. So if we move, if we multiply one item by 10, you have to multiply everything by 10. So if I multiply that by 10, I've only moved it once. And I need to move it all the way. So if that needs to get moved twice, then everything needs to get, get moved twice to the right. And when we do so, we've gotten rid of all the decimals. And uh, then we'd use inverse operations. So this right here continues down here. And we subtract 20r, 50 minus 20 is 30. And at that point, you have to divide both sides by 30, which they did. And 75 divided by 30 is 2.5, or 2 and 5 tenths. So the brothers' constant rate of speed was 2 and a half miles per hour. We have another one right here. A your turn question. Logan has two aquariums. One aquarium contains one and three tenths cubic feet of water and the other contains one and nine tenths cubic feet of water. The water in the larger aquarium weighs 37 and 44 hundredths pounds more than the water in the smaller aquarium. Write an equation with a variable on both sides to represent the situation, then find the weight of one cubic foot of water. What we have is this. Here's my equation. Uh, I want to explain how I arrived at that. The one aquarium has, it says here, one aquarium has one and three tenths cubic feet of water, and the other has, uh, it contains one and nine tenths cubic feet of water. So one of them has one and three tenths, and the other one has one and nine tenths. The water in the larger aquarium weighs one, uh, weighs 37.44 pounds more than the one in the smaller aquarium. So what we could do, so this one weighs more than this one. How much more? By that much more. 
So to make the two sides equal, we have to add that amount to the smaller one. And once we add that amount to the smaller one, they are now this they they're now the same size. They fit the mo the same amount. Because some students might think, oh, well, I'm going to add the 37.44 on to this, but no. We, we, for that to be equal, for them to be the same, we have to add it to the smaller one. Solving equations, just inverse operations. That's 6 tenths uh, of a number equals 37.44, which means you have to divide by 6 tenths. And I did that here, and you get 62 and 4 tenths. So here's my equation. Ask for the equation. And here is my uh, the weight of one cubic foot of water. 62 and 4 tenths pounds. Writing a real world situation from an equation. Real world situations can often be re represented by equations involving fractions and decimals. Fractions and decimals can represent quantities such as weight, volume, capacity, time, and temperature. Decimals can also be used to represent dollars and cents. So write a real world situation that can be modeled by the equation blah. Okay, well, let's break this down. The left side of the equation consists of a variable term. It could represent the cost for x items. Okay, like 95 cents for so many items. The right side of the equation consists of a variable term plus a constant. It could total the cost of x items plus a flat fee. So our flat fee would be that and 55 cents for the item. The equation, uh, this equation could be re represented by this situation. Toonie Tunes charges 95 cents, so there's the 95 cents, for each song you download. Uh, up with Downloads charges 55 cents okay, for each so song, but also charges an annual membership fee of 60 bucks. The one-time fee, the flat fee. How many songs must a com customer download in a year so that the cost will be the same on both websites? So this X will represent how many songs you could download to where the cost for both companies is the same. I have another one here. So your turn, a real world problem that could be modeled by this. I say a bin of rice is a third full. There's that. After 10 additional pounds of rice, so adding 10 pounds of rice, it's at, is added to the bin. The bin is three-fifths full. So it is three-fifths full. How much of the rice does the bin hold when it's full? There you go. And X stands for the capacity of the rice bin. So. And we have exactly what we need for all of this equations with rational numbers. And solving these, we're using the LCM and uh, getting rid of our decimals as well. Thank you for watching.